All right, welcome back. So uh, we're going to talk about how to detect collisions and call on some actions and see what happens um, when two things interact. All right. <laughs> I have all my cats staring at me right now because we were just in a quiet house and now they're like, what the heck is this dude doing? Okay, uh, so just looking back at this project, we got a camera that's got a little script on it. You can see here, my it's very organized. I have a single scene called main scene. That asterisk up here means it's not saved. So control S, it's all up to date. It's now saved. Um, in my scripts folder, I've got two simple scripts that I'll go over in a second. And in my sprites folder, I just downloaded the 2D sprites pack. So the basic images. We could have pulled any old PG, PNGs off the web, but these are nice copyright free, just given to us for free by Unity, so we can use these. All right, so let's get started. Uh, again, the main camera, the only line of code it's got there is we got access to the player in Unity by making this a public game object, so that way we could just select our player. And then my one line of code was saying set the transform position of this game object, aka the camera, because this is the camera controller. I just said set its position to the player's X position, the player's Y position, but I didn't want to set it to the player Z because then I'd be the camera would be flat inside of the game and it wouldn't be able to see anything. So we had to step it back, you know, at 10 spaces, doesn't matter. You could do more or less, zoom in, zoom out. Um, but yeah, so we just said forever, set my position to essentially be the player's position, but backed up a little so I could see the player. That way the camera will follow the player. Okay, one line of code. Uh, now we have this player controller, which as of right now, all it does is has a movement force and it gets access to the rigid body so it can move things around and that just says get whether or not i'm pressing left or right and add that force and we won't go into details here that was another video okay so in here just to go over what i've got i've got a background sprite which is nothing it's in a position with a picture but it doesn't interact with physics or do anything right and i made sure to put it in a background layer again that has nothing to do with things interacting in the world it's just for visually picture how it shows up for me. I want it in the back. And then I put the grassy sprite and the player beach ball in the foreground layer. That way I could see them in front. But more importantly, the grass has a collider so things can bump into it. And then in player, I have both a collider so things can bump into it and the rigid body. So this will have some physics. It'll fall, it'll move, it'll roll. Um, I could stop it from rolling if I want to freeze rotation. But that's the scene I got going. So as of right now, if I press play, uh, my ball is gonna fall in on the grass. Oh, right, I selected an option when I was playing around with this. Uh, we're gonna go over what this is, but on the grass, I clicked this is trigger when I was playing with this a second ago. Um, we'll go over that in a second. But essentially, that's a, we can detect collision, but it doesn't change the physics. So it's kind of like a, a button that doesn't slow a ball down. So it goes over the button, and we can detect it, but it doesn't change the physics. So I'm going to uncheck that. So this is not a trigger. It is a collidable body that things will bump into. So let's press play again. And here we go. It lands on it. Right now, I can press right to push my ball to the right or left to push my ball to the left. That's all I got. I want to be able to jump really quick uh, to detect collisions with this grass. I want to just bounce a little bit. So I'm going to do a real simple version of this. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say if, and then I could do a couple things um, here. I'm going to do input, uh, let's do get button. Now there's a lot of different versions of this and I won't go into detail. Essentially get button it's going to be true the entire time you're holding down the button. So if I'm holding down the button, this thing's going to get called a hundred times. Really, da, 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 da. If I do get button down, which is what I'm going to do right now, that's only true for a single frame. So when I press it, it'll happen once, and then it won't happen again until I release the button and I press it again. And again, it'll get called once. And it's only true for this one frame in the update function. If I do get button up, it's the same thing except when I release. Okay, we could also do the same thing for keys. Um, if I go back here, get key. Now get key is talking specifically about the keyboard. The nice thing about Unity um, is if I do get button down, um, 
Now that's going to deal with any inputs that Unity takes in. So that could be from a phone, what's a jump button on a phone, or from a USB game controller, what's a jump button there. So I'm always going to prefer to use um, get buttons unless you're specifically making this only for PC ever. But I like just getting in the habit. So I'm going to do get button down. So this only happens once and I want to get the jump button. Okay, so I'm going to say if the jump button is pressed, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to my physics thingy. That's my rigid body 2D. That's the um, physics that will get calculated for the ball. I want to push it. So what I want to do is I want to say for my physics thingy, I want to dot add force, just like we did with left and right with one small difference. So I'm going to do vector 2 dot up, right? The up direction times some jump force. So let's make that really quick. Up here where I made a public float for movement force, I'm going to also make a jump force. Okay. And then I'm also going to, um, uh, no, that's it. I'm just going to do that. Now here's the difference. Uh, usually when you add a force, it spreads it out per frame. And we're going to do this in a different place later on called fixed update. We're not going to worry about that right now. But what I want to do with the jump is I want to apply all of the force really quickly, just boom. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go comma and there's a, whoops, um, comma and there's an extra parameter you can put in here. You can see this autocomplete shows me it's the force mode. And so what I want to do is I want to say, you know what? I want to use one of the force modes built in. I want to do, oh, is it 2D? Sorry, force mode 2D. Hold on one second here. Let's go back and see what the autocomplete was. Uh, yeah, force mode 2D. Okay, force mode 2D. And I want to select impulse. That means all of the force applied at once, not spread out slowly like that. When I press the right, the ball slowly started rolling. I want the entire magnitude of the force just shotgunned at it in a second. So I'm going to click, let's do impulse for jumping. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to have to go back in and set the jump force because currently it's at zero. So if I try and do this, it won't happen. And I'm also going to check what keys handle the jump button, okay? So let's go back over here to Unity. Let's see uh, preferences. Oh, sorry, that's a different place. Um, let's go to project settings and inputs, okay? And let's just check what they've got. So here are all my axes. There's uh, 18 set up in this an array. So I was looking at the horizontal one last. Um, so let's see, here's our jump. So the primary button is space. And then we could set up other buttons if we wanted to. So the space bar is going to be my jump. So I'm going to go back to my player and that new field for jump force. I'm going to fill that in. I have no idea. Let's do a hundred and let's see, <laughs> let's see what happens. All right. So space bar, whoa, a hundred was too much. Okay. Let's try something like four. Let's see how that does, okay? So I'm gonna do four. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, while it's in play mode, this won't get saved, but I can just play with this value. Let's go six. Whoops, I have to click back on the game scene. Six, hey, that's pretty good, I like that. I'm gonna just set this to, uh, well, we're gonna exit play mode. They'll reset to what it started at before play mode. And I'm gonna click eight, okay? I think that's pretty good. So when I hit play, I'm gonna jump. That's perfect, okay? So now let's get ready for how we detect collisions. Because obviously when I click play here, I've got this rigid body making this ball fall. And it's hitting into the grass, right? Well, the nice thing is, is Unity is built in through this rigid body class. It's built in all these functions that detect when something's hitting, uh, when things stop colliding and leave. Uh, and we can just play with that. So let's do a couple simple examples right now. Okay, so the script that detects the collision has to be on one of the two colliders, right? So it either has to be the ball detecting that it hit something or the grass detecting that something hit it. It's much harder to detect a collision with like a third object. Much easier is one of these two detects the collision and then sends the information elsewhere if you need it to be sent elsewhere. Okay, but one of these two would detect it. All right, so let's do it on the ball. Okay, so I'm going to go into the balls um, script, which is the player controller. Um, so in here in the player controller, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say down here outside of the update function, I'm going to make a new one. Okay, so down here, I'm going to do void. Now we've got a few different options. Okay, the most basic one is on 
collision, enter, 2D. Uh, all of these things are the same for 3D. You just remove the 2D. So on collision, enter is the 3D version. On collision, enter, 2D is the 2D version, okay? And then in parentheses, every time this happens, it's gonna generate an object. And all that object is is a programming way of saying, here's a collection of information, really specifically formatted information. So when a collision gets hit, uh, real simple sorts of things it'll hold is like where the collision happened, what game object you hit, uh, you know, things like that. So the object that it creates is called collision, 2D, because a collision happened in 2D. And then we can give it any name we want. So really common name is other. So now we can get all this information, okay? Really common now is you say like, uh, you know, if the other um, is, you know, uh, booby trap, then minus a life, you know, that sort of thing. So you can check what you hit in that way. But first, we're just gonna start really easy. We're just gonna print out, we hit something. So the way you do that, and this is really helpful uh, for getting values and testing your code, is we're just gonna go debug.log and we're gonna say the ball hit something, okay? That's it, so, oops, semicolon. So my entire thing is I'm gonna call on the pre-made function on collision enter 2D, and that's gonna generate this collision object, which I'm not using yet. I'm just, it has to generate the data about the collision. And then in here, I'm just gonna simply say, no matter what I hit, when I hit it, I just wanna print the ball hit something, okay? So I'm gonna save that, control S. I'm gonna go back over here. And a nice trick is up here, you can run the code in debug mode to see if there's any errors and there weren't any. Oh, that's so fantastic, okay? So let's go back here, we go play. And we're gonna click over here to this console. And this is where all those debug.logs are gonna show up. So I'm gonna click back on the game screen. So if I'm clicked elsewhere, the space bar doesn't do anything. If I click on the game screen, now space bar jumps. And then we watch, oh snap, we hit something. Clicked on the game screen, highlighted, jump. Oh yeah, I hit something. So we've got a real simple collision, right? Now what I wanna do is I wanna actually use some of the information. So I'm gonna exit play mode here. If you really want, you can click clear. I have this set to clear on play. So each time it starts, it'll reset. So I won't get confused on error messages from previous play modes. Okay, so let's go in here. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some information from other here. I'm gonna say uh, debug.log. And notice I didn't use a capital here. Um, I'm leaving that lowercase, but as soon as I go space, it automatically corrects that for me, which I just love. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, uh, let's say the name of the object the ball hit is, and now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take other, and essentially you're gonna back up a directory. You're gonna say, okay, I've got this other, and one of the attributes of this other object is, I can get access to the entire game object that it hit. I can change its transform, I can find its uh, position, I can rotate it, I can do whatever I want, right? So I'm gonna say other dot, and then the way to step back is lowercase g game object. And that's a way of always referencing this whole entire game object. If out here, I use lowercase game object, that's a way, oh, not capital, uh, that's a way of me referencing myself. That's like a this. Uh, we'll use that in other scenes, but just mentioning. Whereas capital G game object is talking about any game object. That's the entire um, class that we would create objects of that type. Okay, anyways. So down here, I'm gonna say the name of the object I hit is from the other thing that we hit, step back to game object and then dot, and one of its attributes is name. Okay, I'm also going to say debug.log, um, uh, let's see, oh, the tag of the game object is, and then I'm gonna go to the tag, so we don't have a tag yet, but this is a really useful thing. Um, rather than referencing name, we can tag things with information, right? We could tag things as a platform, tag things as a projectile, tag things as player, enemy, uh, and that's a way, rather than dealing with individual names, you could group items. Um, so let's see where I was at. Okay, so let's end that. Let's save it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here and I'm going to give this a tag, okay? Uh, I was 
Oh, are we crashing here? Hold on, let's try it. There we go. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my grass that I'm hitting. And right here, it's already got a ground deck because I just did this as I was warming up to make sure <laughs> there wouldn't be any errors. Okay, so what I could do is I could just say, you know what, I'm gonna make a whole new tag, okay? So I've made exactly one tag, which I could even delete if I wanted, but I'm gonna make a new tag and I'm gonna say, oh, let's call this as the like beautiful field of rolling grass. Okay, it's a really long tag, but that's okay. It's really descriptive and descriptive is really helpful. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. We're gonna select beautiful field grass because notice when I created it, it didn't do anything with that. When I said add tag, that just was saying add a tag to the pool of possible tags. Um, a common mistake is you forget to use it. So go back in here and say, okay, so now this has that tag. So when I click play and I watch this console window, bam, it hit. Now it printed all those lines. I hit something, great. That's not very descriptive, but I know the collision at least got detected. That's helpful in debugging. And then you say specifically, I hit something called grassy ground swipe. That's the actual name in the hierarchy of this thing. Then down here, it says, oh, and the tag of it is, um, wait, why is it showing up as grassy ground sprite? It's a beautiful field of rolling grass. Um, well, now I've run into my first glitch. Let me pause this and see what happened there. Well, that pause was all of one second long. When I was talking about adding a tag, I never did. I just said other dot game object and then didn't do anything after that. So I was trying to reference the entire game object. So by default, it showed me the name and it kind of prompted me like, uh, yeah, there might've been an error going on here. But let's go back and just say, you know what, dot, I wanted to talk about the tag. That was the whole point of adding the tag. Okay, so saving it. Going back over here, let's exit play mode. Even though I save that code in mono develop while in play mode, that doesn't matter. We're actually writing to the script file that's totally separate from Unity, although Unity will call on it. Okay, so let's click play. Now let's see, boom. And now it says name of the object, which is the name of the actual game object. And then down here, the tag is, oh, beautiful field of rolling grass. That's just wonderful. Okay, so there's really only one more thing I wanna show you. Um, let's add another game object here. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is how to like essentially turn off physics when you collide with something, so to ignore it. You kinda got a sneak peek because I left something on trigger. So I'm gonna drag in a coin sprite. I'm gonna put it wherever I want. That was an incredibly small coin. Um, let's see, oh, it just went in the back. So let's change the layering. So let's go to put it in the foreground. Okay, uh, we could even make that coin a tiny bit bigger. Let's see what that looks like in play mode. Ah, uh, yeah, we can make that a little bit bigger. Again, you could change the import um, settings in terms of like how many pixels. So let's say, let's draw it at like 75. That's a good number. And let's apply and see what happens. Oh yeah, I like that size better. Okay, so I'm not animating this coin or anything, but what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to pick it up. Maybe later we play a sound, maybe later after that we use like, we uh, build 2D mechanics in a 3D world. And with some basic sine and cosine, we have the coin like spinning and hovering up and down a little bit. And maybe when you touch it, like a little firework, like bling and fireworks go off, like, you know, whatever happens, it's just that split second, those little touches. Okay, so anyways, um, let's go to the move tool up here and let's just reposition that, I don't know, let's say, Oh, right here at the edge, just because then you die right after you grab the coin. Okay, so, oh, okay, we're back on. I'm in my living room. Somebody walked in the front door. <laughs> All right, so uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn this into a trigger. Okay, so um, over here, of course, if we want to detect any collisions, it has to have a body to collide with right? Because right now all it is is a position and a picture. But if I press play and like roll my ball over there, there's no interaction with a picture, right? Like it just went right by, nothing happened. So what I need to do first is I'll add a little collider. So let's delete that. Um, I'm just going to type in collider to save some time, but I could have just navigated to physics 2D right here. Um, I'm specifically looking for a circle collider 2D. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is, I mean, just look at that. Because of the image, like that's the collider, that's crazy. I don't want a collider that big. So I'm gonna go edit collider, and I'm gonna grab this and pull it in a little bit. I like being a little inside the image. I think that just gives for a tighter interaction. Move this down a little bit. 
There we go. I think that's a good collider. So I'm going to exit that. Uh, now what I want to do is I don't want my ball to hit it and stop. So if I hit play right now and I run into coins like ding, oh, like that was anticlimactic. Okay. So what I want to do is I'm going to click is trigger. So now there's still a collision being detected, but as I roll by, it's as though the thing wasn't there. So that's really helpful when you want to pick items up but you don't want to muck up your rotation, your velocity. You don't want to like just bounce and veer off course spinning wildly. You want to continue the way you were going and just play a sound or something like that. So you want the collision detected, but not mucking up the physics. Okay, so I'll leave this is trigger checked. And then over here, what I'll do is that was if I collide with a collider, not a trigger, like I've hit a hard object and thud. Okay, that's on collision, all right? I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna write a very similar function and it's called on trigger enter 2D. And then this is the part that I always get mixed up on, but collider 2D, okay? So on collision, you do collision and on trigger, you do collider. Um, they all have a 2D after them because we're in 2D right now. If you change to 3D, you just simply remove the 2D from all the collision, trigger, and collider. Okay, so we're gonna do all the same stuff. Um, since there's only one trigger, I don't need to have any if statements right now. I can just say debug.log, whoops, hit the coin. Okay, let's see if it works. So we'll save that. This is on the player, so it should be running. Just to double check so that all this will work, I'm gonna just click so the player has a rigid body because that's all collisions originate from that class. If you remove the rigid body, no collisions will happen because theoretically, that thing isn't moving. Or if it's moving, you programmed it to animate move, so it shouldn't be colliding with anything. So. As long as we have that rigid body and a collider on that object, and then on our coin, we got a collider on that object, we should be good to go. So I'm gonna click on my player and hovering over the scene, I'm gonna click F. And that just focuses on my player. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. That can be really helpful when something's like fallen far away or you're curious where something is, or you just wanna save time scrolling. Okay, so let's press play. Let's press right and left, got some good controls. Let's see, scrolling over here. Oh, snap, hit the coin. Let's try again, okay? So, scrolling over, we got, we hit the ground, waiting, waiting, bang, hit the coin. So what we wanna do though is when we play that, when we hit that coin, we wanna just get rid of it. Like we picked up the coin and maybe I'll even drop a couple more coins in there. But first, let's go over here. Now, since we have this other, there's this sweet, sweet command that is, destroy and that will literally remove that game object from the scene so it will completely wipe out that game object so we're going to say destroy um, and then other is the game object we want to refer to um, sometimes you might see other dot game object referring to the game object but other is sufficient to just destroy it so let's go in here saved it let's press play and now when we go over Oh, we didn't. Let's see. Um, maybe you do need the destroy dot, uh, other dot game object. I thought other was sufficient to destroy. Okay, let's try it again. Little glitch there. So now we're just saying when we collide with that thing, let's talk about the game object and let's destroy it. Ah, perfect. Okay, so all I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go back in here. I'm gonna comment these out. These were super useful. Maybe I'll use them later. So let's just comment those out really quick. I'll even comment, comment out the hit the coin. So let's save this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my scene. And I wanna make a prefab of the coin. The way you do that is in your project folder, you just, and it doesn't matter where you put it, but for organization's sake, let's create a folder called prefabs, although you could put it anywhere. And I'm gonna take my coin sprite and rename it to coin, okay? Now, as soon as I drag this down here, it's saying save this game object with all its properties and bring it down here to save. Now, I'm gonna specifically put it in prefabs, but actually, let's just put it out here for now. So wherever you put it, it's now a prefab. And see, this is blue. 
So if I make any changes here, I can apply it to all prefabs or I can just change this one. Like if I change this to not be a trigger and then pull a couple of these back and be like, oh, look at all these coins. All the ones saved from the prefab are still triggers because I never applied this change to all of them. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete all of my coins. Okay, there's no coins this scene, but I have this prefab coin, which I'll move into the prefabs folder and I'll drag a few in. There's one coin, two coins, three coins, four coins. I love it. Five, six coins. Although my hierarchy is starting to get really um, kind of just clunky with all these coins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. This is totally empty. It has no properties at all. All I'm going to do is I'm going to call this all of my coins. So it has nothing but a position. There's, it's not going to show up with a picture. It's not going to interact with physics. There's, it's not going to change the mechanics of my game at all. But now I can take all of my coins and I can just slide them under there like a folder and boom. Now I've got all my coins hidden under there. So it cleans up my scene. And then what I can do is I can go over here and I can slide these and be like, I want, whoops, <laughs> I was selecting all the coins. Let's select one coin. Let's put one over here, one over here. Um, you could do this mathematically, programmatically. You could, um, you know, find a nice number. You could do it aesthetically, but I'm just putting a bunch of these spread out. Okay. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. All right. So now I've got these all set up. They're all triggers and my code is set to indiscriminately destroy all triggers, which is wonderful. Okay. So let's go back in here. We'll press play and bink. Bink, bink, bink. Ah, too far. Okay, let's go back over here. So, one, two. Ooh, turn around. I win. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, I'll show you just one or two quick other things. Uh, sometimes it's useful uh, for some reason to say destroy. And then this command, if you put a comma in here, a really useful thing to do is you can put in a float time. So let's say destroy after one second. Um, and what that does is that like starts a ticking time bomb. And that can be really useful in code to not just destroy something instantaneously. I mean, with a coin, you want it to just disappear. But um, that can be a really useful trick. So let's go back over here. The code is saved. Okay. Um, again, like you're wondering in terms of applying to prefab, um, I didn't, that had nothing to do with the prefab. That was all written in the player script. So saving that player script saved it for the player. And then that's how it interacts with all those coins. So that didn't, that didn't affect anything about prefab or applying changes. So let's click play. Let's see. Now we're just going to start a ticking time bomb. One second, one second, one second. Oh man, I'm terrible at this game. Let's go to the other side. Okay. Ready? Time bomb, time bomb, time bomb. Ah, boom. So that's a really useful one. Um, one last one that I want to show you is it's really useful sometimes to use tags or very often to use tags. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all the coins on one side. Let's say the ones on the right. Okay, and I'm going to give them a coin tag. Okay, so I'm going to say add tag. I'm going to say this is a coin. Okay, with capital letter C sharp and unity I use capitals a lot and a lot of times Java doesn't. Um, that's a small change, but I'm going to use capitals. I'm going to stick with that. Okay, so for this coin on the right, I'm going to make it called a coin for over here. I'm going to make it called a coin and for the next one, I'm going to make it called a coin. So the ones on the right, those three are tagged as coin. The ones on the left are not. They're left untagged. You can notice that up here. So since those don't have a tag, I want to choose if I hit these coins, I want to delete them. If I hit other things that aren't coins, I don't want to muck with those, okay? So let's go back. Whoops, wrong window. Let's go back over here. So on trigger enter, what I want to do is I want to say, I'm going to get rid of that delay. I want to do it instantaneously, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if, and then I'm going to do other dot, and then I'm going to do compare tag. And what that does is that is essentially saying if other dot game object dot tag equals equals the word I'm looking for, except we don't ever 
compare strings in that way. We use a method that compares character by character. So that's why instead we're doing other dot compare tag, and then we're gonna pass in that string. But again, we're just checking, is it equal equal to? So um, really useful is you can also do, does it include if you have uh, multiple tags kind of put together into one string? But we're gonna check if the other tag is coin, then we're going to destroy the other object. Else we're gonna say, and I'm gonna do an else, and I'm gonna do um, debug.log. We hit something that wasn't a coin, okay? Because these debug.logs can be really useful. So now when I hit a trigger, it's gonna call this method. And then, and again, it's only when we enter, so it only happens once when I hit the thing. It's going to, if it's a coin, so if the tag is a coin, it's going to destroy the other, which is the thing we hit. Now, otherwise, which again is only if we hit a trigger and it's not a coin, then otherwise we're just gonna say we hit something, or not even something, we hit a trigger that wasn't a coin, or even more, wasn't tagged as a coin, just to be super descriptive. Okay, so let's go back in here. Let's click play and so we just hit a trigger, but that one was on my left three that was not tagged as a coin. Okay, I clicked on my scene, so I'm gonna scroll right and boom, deleted, boom, deleted, boom, deleted. We go back over here and hit something, hit something, hit something. And notice how when I leave a trigger and then re-enter, I get that call again. And then I get that call again, leave, enter, leave, enter leave <laughs> all right guys that was it um again i'll kind of highlight this script if you want to zoom in pause you can check this out uh that's it all right hope you guys enjoyed the video